shoot. Hi, I'm the Moorlander and this is Moorlander EDC. I hope you are all well and having a great Sunday. Hope you all had a great week now. I'm gonna get straight into it with this one because there's a lot to talk about. This is possibly one of the most feature rich backpacks that I've ever really tested. Um, and I think that's credit to the Craig Goch team mainly for the fact that you know, there's been a lot of development put into this and a lot of thought put into this. Um, now, what I'd say is, when, when you've finished watching this, obviously, because you're going to want to watch this in full because it's going to be an amazing piece of content. Uh, this should have been, or at least I should have recorded this last week, but I was unfortunately in a road traffic accident on the way here, which meant that I couldn't film this. So what I did release last week was an interview that I did with Crib Goch back in, I think it was November, it was, no, it was October, it was the end of October. Um, I went to um, meet them and I did an interview with them. I met Steve and the rest of the team and we looked at, you know, where Crib Goch came from, their expertise in the forces, how that expertise was then pushed to, to develop pieces of kit that went beyond what they really found from the pieces of kit that they were using and that, that's really what inspired them to start to develop kit uh, and so on and so forth. So I, I definitely recommend when you finish watching this piece of content is to watch the interview that I did with Crib Goch last week because that will give you a little bit more insight into the team, their ideas and, and so on and so forth so that you can see a little bit more behind the scenes of this pack. But what we are here today to look at is the Constrictor 2 backpack from Craig Goch. Now as I say, so I've had this now since October, so it was the end of October and I've done, I've done quite a bit with this, more so than I may do with norm, than your normal EDC pack. When we talk about military inspired backpacks. Now this isn't a military inspired backpack. This is a through and through military backpack designed by ex-forcemen um, for existing force men, men and women. Um, and again, you know, we, we talk about a lot that in that. But Craig Brock are looking to expand. They've had some absolutely amazing um, wins with a lot of forces that these backpacks have been sold into all around Europe, South America and the, and the rest of the world. Um, and they're starting to branch out to more of the consumer market as well, which, which I said I was more than happy to make some content with them on. Um, so there's a lot to get into, there really is, and I've tested this, I've tested this uh, as, as an EDC backpack, I've tested this, you might have seen it in the background while I've been out filming this sort of stuff, um, and I've also done, I've done some rooking with this as well, it's, it's designed to take weight, which is one of the things that we'll look at, especially how it's also been, um, they've worked with the Royal College of physicians uh, with a with a dedicated spinal expert to make sure that the design of this pack centers around how it carries and it's it's weird and weird in a good way not not weird in a bad way it's weird in a good way because when you've got it on it has a it has a certain feeling about it and you can you can feel it on your muscles. I get, you know, I'm, 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 getting, I'm getting too far into it. I'm getting too far into it. What I'll do now is I'll turn the camera around as usual while I'm turning the camera around. If at any point you do enjoy this content or even find it mildly amusing, then please feel free to hit that like button. That would be absolutely amazing. And don't forget to subscribe. Let's see if we can hit uh, 10,000 subscri subscribers by the end of 2022. Maybe share, that would be amazing. But for now, come on, we'll turn the camera around. We'll have a closer look at the Constrictor 2 backpack from Crib Goch. Now, as we usually do, we'll go through some measurements, some materials, and then we'll go through the features of the backpack itself. The Constrictor 2 measures 500 millimeters from top to bottom. It measures 280 millimeters across and has a depth of 210 millimeters. It's a 35 liter backpack. Now, as far as your EDC backpacks are concerned, that's on the large side. Um, I think kind of 35 down to about 20 is generally your, your kind of EDC pack, although I know certainly recently there have been a lot of smaller packs around that kind of 16 meter mark, but this is on the large side, but for EDC 
that is mainly however for what this is intended for 35 liters is is kind of your standard around that mark for a three-day pack and that that's what you can get out of this you'll be able to carry at least three days worth of provisions for whatever sort of activity um, you're out there needing to do and you definitely can fit a lot in this pack the way in which you can manage and get your items in and out of it it is a top loader which do you know what, I've not had a top loader for quite a while and just using a top loader takes me back to some of the backpacks that I used to use with my granddad when we go walking in North Wales, he was a military man um, and going out with walks with my dad as well, although he wasn't a military man, we did we did a lot of walks and it's, it's, a, it's a tried and tested, I'm going to say traditional style of loader and the reason for that is because it just works so well um, but what Crib Gok have done on here is they put in some other management systems in way that if you need to get to areas of the pack without having to unpack it then you can do that and it's certainly something that we'll have a look at as, as, as we go through it. Construction wise it is completely constructed from 1000D PU backed um, polyester all of the zips on here, all of the zips are the new RC self-sealing zips, uh, YKK zippers that are bulletproof. Um, there, there is a large zip here on the front, which you know we'll, we'll touch on this a little bit later. Uh, but this uses the size 10 zip just to make sure it's completely snag free. As an extra point, um, Krig Goch, they don't settle for okay. In fact, they don't settle for very good. Um, they'd done a lot of testing on certain stress points on the bag and one of the stress points was the zips and they were happy that they moved up to the, the larger size to make sure that they didn't have any snags on there and they, they strayed as, stayed as tough as possible. But one of the other po points that they'd done is, is they've gone through all of the plastics on here. So they tried the Duraflex, they tried the I ITW, they tried the Wujin. And they got to the point where they just didn't feel as though they were good enough. So they've actually developed their own plastics for this. And the plastics on here are ridiculous. And I mean that in a good way. I use the term ridiculous way too much on this channel. But these are ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. So they are incredibly tough. When you look at your normal kind of Duraflex ones that are say maybe two or three millimeters in thickness they're almost well they're not they're not double that but you can definitely see when I bring up some close-ups that they're definitely thicker than that they have a very deep kind of snap to it I like I, lo I love Wujin buckles the snap that you get from Wujin buckles has got a really nice positive connection sound with these it's like engaging two trains when you know when they smash together and you, you couple them together um, so they, they went above and beyond, they weren't happy with what was out there and went right fine we'll develop our own. So all of the plastics on here are their own plastics that they've developed themselves. Everything else, um, there is there is some uh, mill spec webbing on here, there's webbing on the side as well. Um, but everything else is, is made from that 1000D PU coated um, polyester to make sure that as far as water retention is concerned, everything, it really just does bead off. I've done some walks when I, the last rook that I went on this, I'd got 20 kilos in this. It was, yeah, it was good fun, but it started raining about halfway around um, and everything in, that was in here was, was perfectly fine. I had put it in a dry bag just in case. Um, but I got I got to the end and you know it was all perfect. So now with a closer look, we'll go around the pack itself and all of the features on here. Um, now I did mention at the beginning of this that there are a lot of features and they really are. This is designed to be used in lots and lots and lots of situations. Craig Goth started um, with a lot of expertise around jungle warfare. Um, especially on the back when you look at the, the features that they've added to help with sweat reduction. Um, there's a lot in there, but it's also have, has been designed to be used wherever that it needs to be. Even with additions on the side so that you can put crampons on there if you need to use those or if you're in snowy environments. So as I mentioned, you know, there's, there's a lot to talk about all over the bag. 
So starting at the front, you'll hopefully you'll be able to see that we've got some PALS webbing here. So there are one, two, three, four, five, six rows with one, two, three, four, five, six, seven columns. So you can pretty much fit on here whatever it is that you need to if you do need to customize this pack. As far as modularity is concerned, this is the granddaddy of modularity. There is so much you can do on the sides rather than just having say two or three rows with a couple of columns. Um, on the side here you've got four rows um, with one, two, three, four, five columns. Now I will say with those columns, the columns here on the outside are very small so you wouldn't be able to fit, they're not actually usable. When you get close to the front of the bag, these aren't as thin as these, but they're not that full one inch. You'll still be able to get something on there. There's a few pouches that I've tried with, uh, where the, uh, the, the sticks th that you pass through, they've been able to fit through and I've, I've been able to attach. Whereas there's a couple where they're just that extra little bit wider, so you've not been able to use these. But you've definitely got three that you can use with pretty much anything that you want. And then there's, th there's this additional one on the outside, which you, 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 have to, you have to kind of force it in there, let's just say. But getting back to the front, so you have all of that PALS webbing on here. Um, there are some buckles which release the top loader hood. Um, and then, other, other than that, there's, there's no quick access pockets or anything like that here. But you will see that there is a zip. Now I did mention, so this is a top loader. But if you want to get to something that's here, um, say, towards the bottom, by releasing these two buckles and lifting it up a bit and then releasing the two compression straps on the side there is an ambi open zip here which I actually moved down the other day when I was putting some stuff in that you can get into there so now I've packed this just for like a, a random day out just, just to show what you can get in here but this front zip has an additional pocket here where you can fit some organization uh, and again some extra pockets. Now what I might mention on this bit, so as far as poppers are concerned there are a couple of poppers, there's some in here and then there's some on the side. Rather than using steel or metal poppers they've actually used these plastic ones. Now I have to say I've never used or never come across plastic poppers like this but You'll certainly have to take my word for it that these are ridiculous. Again, I've used the word ridiculous, that's twice today. Incredibly strong, incredibly tough, but I guess from an operational point of view, um, if it means that they can't rust and they can't degrade or not work or something drops on them and they bend, then they will still work. And there is also an additional pocket here which then goes underneath the pack, which um, is which is quite nice. It's just to be able to get that stuff if you need to at a pinch. Now let's just do these back up. You will notice that there are a lot of buckles on this. Now the reason for these buckles, and especially talking to Crib Gok about it is, you know, they understand that when you're walking with gear. If you've got something in a backpack that is moving as you're walking, your body will have to try and overcompensate for that walk. So they've thrown as much stability, organisation, more compression at this. On the side, which will, will that's, that's it for the front. Uh, actually, on the bottom, so there are some drainage holes just in case you do get water into this. There are two extra handles on here as well. This is mainly for that military side. If your buddy's down on the floor and you need to pull him or her out of a sticky situation, who cares how you grab them? You grab them and you get them out of there. So the two additional handles here at the bottom. From my point of view, although I've not traveled with this bag yet, I like a grab handle wherever I can get one, mainly because traveling on planes, you put it in somewhere, somebody moves your stuff. Just to be able to grab something from taxes, I really do find them incredibly useful. And then we have two additional straps here on the bottom, so that if you wanted to put a bedroll on here, um, I've carried cameras, uh, camera tripods on here. If you want to take your jacket off, you can put this under here as well. Incredibly useful uh, make, and adds to that versatility. On the side, 
So we've got two compression straps. Now I'm just going to pop these open mainly so that you can see what we have here on the side. So as I mentioned, you have uh, these three rows of five columns. This, as I mentioned, you know, these three on the side here can be used, but they really can't be used if you want to use this with a molly system. They're just a little bit too small. But around here, hopefully here at the top. So here at the top, we have some additionals so that you can put crampons into here. So they slide up that way, then they slide down into the bottom and then you can use this compression strap and the other compression strap to be able to hold those into place. One of the things that Cribgok also wanted is they wanted something to be able to stow water so that you've got uh, easy access to that water if you're, if you're using this and you, you need to have a drink. But they also wanted to keep the ability to be able to store crampons uh, and uh, walking sticks, ice axes, the, the raw loops for these on the side. But they wanted to ha have something that you could have an easy access uh, to, to a bottle or to some water. So instead of having something that fits behind or, or, or by the side of this, instead here you have a deployable roll with two poppers. They just pop out. You can then open this up to fit in a bottle. You can fit up to um, a water, uh, uh, sorry, <laughs> a water bottle. I mean that would be useful, you'd hate to carry a, a bottle of oil. Um, but you can fit up to a litre bottle uh, of water into these and then rather than having this flapping around you can then use the uh, compression strap which has plenty of additional webbing on there to be able to make sure that that stays in place. When that's not being used, all you have to do then is just roll it up, use the poppers. Now, the poppers on here are really tough. There you go, I didn't do it. Um, let's do this. Do you know what, let's do this in real time. That way you can see me actually trying to do this. So the poppers are incredibly tough on this. Now, you fall into two camps. You fall into the camp of, oh, I hate tough poppers, or you fall into the camp of, I quite like tough poppers, mainly because if they're tough, that means that they're not going to break. Generally, I fall into the camp of, I like tough poppers. So that's your side. Now, both sides on here are exactly the same. There's no difference between each of the sides. The compression straps, the compression straps are done correctly in my eyes and that is that they are on the interior or at least they are on the face of the pack itself. The main reason for that is that most backpacks, I mean let, let's, let's talk frankly, on, on every single backpack the, the weakest part on any backpack generally is the zip. All of this other material is military grade and is super tough. If you're pulling this way against that zip, that zip may possibly open. So what they've done is they've put the webbing on the inside or at least outside of the zip on the face here and then added additional gussets in there to be able to spread the load of that. I have to say, the compression straps on this, these are, these are pretty bulletproof compression straps. Um, when I did the 20kg walk, so I can carry 15kgs with um, weights that I've got. So the additional, um, the additional 5kgs, I had two two litre water bottles and I had a one litre water bottle because one litre of water weighs a, weighs a kilogram. So I got these in here and it was pretty packed to the point where we, we got quite a bit of a, or at least I got quite a bit of a bulge on the front. Using these compression straps, you know, cinched everything down, there was no movement. I'd made sure that the water was filled up to the top so there was no sloshing. It did an absolutely stellar job. All of the compression straps used those beefy buckles which again are absolutely amazing and then on the side so you've got an additional um, grab handle. Now the grab handles on this have been designed in such a way to aid something and we'll hold that thought for now because it's something that we'll definitely come back to. Additional bits on here, you have some uh, D-rings just in case you want to attach anything else to the side, um, then you can put those on there as well. As mentioned, here on this side is exactly the same as, as the other side as well. Now to get into the, actually no, before we get into the actual top itself, the lid on this, 
rather than being a floating lid, um, I'm certainly used to these style top loader backpacks with floating lids. Um, they didn't go down the floating lid avenue, I guess you'd call it, but I, I, I can, you know, I, I appreciate that that's, that's the route that they went. I think with floating lids, you, you just end up with way more straps all over the place. So I, I can imagine that's probably why. So on the front, you have uh, an extra zip. So if you need to be able to get into anything quickly, you can fit anything in there. You know, I've got a mobile phone. I've got a piece of plastic that I use just in case I need to sit on there. But the, um, the pocket in here goes all the way across to the back, all the way across and then all the way down. So it's a good nine inches wide by about nine inches deep. Um, and it's, it's also uh, gusseted as well. So you can actually fit more in there if, if, if it was to lift up and yeah, you can definitely fit a lot in. There's definitely not an inch of this bike that Crib Gok haven't thought is this one inch square being used to its full potential? And you can get that just from this, just one that from this small area here on the lid. So on the sides, we have two cinching points. These can be used in conjunction with the straps here on the side uh, and some of the loops for ice axes, for walking poles, they're all there. You get to the top, we've got additional lashing points here. You wanna put a bedroll through there, whatever you want to be able to, you, you, you can put through there as well. When they've then moved down, so here's the here's the D-ring that holds that lashing point onto the actual frame of the lid. And what they've done is they've gone, is this being used? Have, have we got webbing here that can have a secondary or tertiary use? Yeah, we can. So they've doubled over each of these, sewn in a, a triple box stitch here and then so that they've then got two additional loops so you've got an additional lashing point if you need to have that on as well maybe something's not uh, holding in position that like you wanted to here you can attach these to it where you've got more of an elasticated lash to it again it just stops it from moving around there's been a hell of a lot of port or thought just put just put into this this small area here now this opens in a traditional fashion as mentioned you know this this is a traditional kind of traditional top loader with the lid that just comes back rather than having a floating lid they've decided to go with a lid that is stitched on the top but even the lid itself as you can imagine um, you can put something on here put that over it uh, and then you, you can you can fix it on with that but with additional fixture points in here as well so you can open these up this will this is mainly to keep everything in place in here. As I mentioned before, as far as keeping everything in place is key to make sure that you can walk with as natural gait as possible. These can be cross attached. These can be attached like that if it is that you wanna pass something through and secure something on there. Um, and they've also added these additional gussets in to make sure that the, the load here is, um, uh, is what's the word is past <laughs> I've forgotten the word um, but in here if I hold that like that you can see that the webbing so the webbing comes through and it's and it's stitched on but the webbing is actually integral to the part of this gusset and then when it's sewn into here and then the gusset is then sewn onto that so it's not just this gusset here that is holding uh, this in place incredibly tough now getting back to the traditional side uh, you have a snow hood in here the snow hood opens with uh, with a drawstring and then there is an additional one on the front as well so your snow hood stops any material any snow any debris from getting into whatever you have on the inside um, and then you can use this additional one to make sure that if you want to again fasten that up tighten that up then then you can do and it has if I just pull this over, it has that traditional barrel kind of opening on the inside. So in here, this is the bag that I keep my camera equipment in. Uh, there's something in there to drink from. We've got some fire materials and bits of kit. We've got something if I want to do a little bit of plinking while I'm out. We've got a can so I can make a drink. We've also got um, a hard shell in there as well, just in case it gets wet. 
uh, solar powered charger, super useful. Now I know this is the one thing that you guys have been waiting for, is this tactical teddy bear compliant and yes I can definitely say it is 100% tactical teddy bear compliant, it gets a thumbs up from tactical teddy bear. On the inside hopefully you'll be able to see it's just a big dump pouch which is incredibly useful. You can fit whatever you want in here. I've got in there a day supply kind of for just a day out here filming in the woods. I'll make myself a brew when, I, when I'm done. On the inside you can see this is where all the where, where we've, it's all coated. All of the stitching, all of the stitching is reinforced uh, and has protection around there as well to stop any snags. If there is stuff that's getting tucked in and out of here a lot, especially with kit, it just makes sure that none of this will fray so it will keep in the condition that you expect it to be. You know, you look after your tools, your tools will look after you. In the back panel here, there is um, uh, another sleeve. Now, I have used this with a 16 inch laptop. It fits. I don't think it was designed, especially because this is, I mean, this isn't a military inspired backpack. This is a military backpack. Um, but you can you can definitely fit a 16 inch laptop in there, which was pretty useful because I've, I've done a, a few trips out to see clients with this. Um, but if you needed to, you can put a full water bladder in there. Now, I don't know what the size of it is, but I'm going to guess, due to the size of this, being able to fit a 16 inch laptop in there, I can definitely say, as, as, a, as an educated guess, you can fit up to at least um, a three litre water bladder in there. You might be able to fit larger, but again, you know, I, I don't actually have that measurement. Now, as far as your water bladder coming out, there is one on each side so that you can make sure if you need to take a drink. And then as far as the snow hood is concerned, then you'll need to pass it through the actual bin lid itself. So it comes out through the snow hood here, and then you'll pass that through again through the bin lid so it can come out there as well. But it's ambi, so you can have that whether you're a lefty or a righty, and you can get access to water if, if, you, if you need to, to, uh, to take a drink. Now I did mention, so we do have this zip here on the front which gives you access uh, to whatever's in the bottom if you do need to access that. But when you have, um, if that's not opened, it still gives you easy access you probably can't see my hand just reaching in there, but it still gives you easy access into that organisation panel. And then there is the additional bit at the bottom if, there, if there's bits of kit maybe that you don't need to use as much. If you're not going to be using that front panel though, that bit down there at the bottom is going to be particularly tricky to get to if this is fully loaded. So, I mean, well that's it. <laughs> you can't get to it through the top. They've got a way around it. You can get to it through the front, through the front, but it's great. I think for me, certainly the way that I've used these before, and from my experience in things like climbing um, through multi-pitch routes, that sort of stuff, I can see that this will be absolutely amazing for that. You can have this as a uh, as, as a dump bucket for um, for rope, all of that sort of stuff. When you look on the outsides here, something that I've not mentioned yet, but round the outsides of the skirt, you've got one, two, three, four, five, six additional fastenings. So if you're using this for belaying, if you're on a multi-stage route, all of that sort of stuff, you can attach these, you can just fold this back, you can attach these to a belay, or sorry, you can attach these um, to your harness so that you can belay with this. There's a lot that you can do with this and I think this is why this traditional top loader bucket style is ju it's just never going to go out of fashion because it works in just so many different ways. You want to close it up, fasten everything on the front there to make sure that everything is then going to stay nice and secure, pull that tight, close these, close these over. lid over, fasten that down and then you are absolutely good to go. Now there is one, we usually get to the back, 
So you have some load adjusters when you look at the suspension system and there is also a really, really nice grab handle here. Rather than just using a bit of webbing, they've, they've added this um, really nice TPU plastic uh, style um, cover over it so you can you, you do get a good purchase with that. I've got medium to large size hands I've got plenty of room to get in there uh, and, and pull that. Now as far as the suspension system is concerned we'll have a look at this a little bit in a second but all of this is super reinforced. Um, I certainly talked a lot about this when we had a look at one of the Victos backpacks. So it's stitched into the backpack and then there is an additional seam of webbing that then goes across that. So rather than just having one point where it's attached, there are several points, as you can see from the stitching here, that are reinforced by this additional piece. And this is also sewn in to the grab handle. So if you want to grab somebody and make sure you can pull them to safety, then you can definitely do that. It's designed to carry up to 100 kilos. Um, and I can, I'm pretty sure that you can grab this and you can pull somebody out of the way if needs be. Now one of the major differences that makes this backpack different to easily any backpack, I say easily, I mean any backpack. I've not come across a backpack like this in the way that the carry system works here on the back. So when talking to Crib Goch about the idea around this back panel, the backpack was designed around this back panel so that you can wear this, you can go for long walks with this and you can ease the tension that you get on your back that generally you get from most military backpacks. Um, and that's this back panel. So this, this is a patented back panel by Crib Goch that they went to the Royal College of Physicians and when how does your back work? And I, well, it works like this. What are you doing? Well, we're making a backpack. Okay, well, this is how it works. And the Royal College of Physicians were quite perplexed that a backpack company had never come to them in the past and said, how does your back work? So there's been a lot of, well, okay, so uh, Craig Goch sent me the studies that were done with the Royal College of Physicians. I'm not allowed to share it with you, but I can definitely say when you look at the research that was put into, there's been a lot of other research that they've done against other suppliers and military backpacks that they've done where they test a plethora of different points on your body from skin temperature to your tilt to lots of different things. Uh, they ended up doing it with a heavier backpack than everybody else and got the best results from prolonged testing using this system. So what it has, I'm trying to get this at the best angle but hopefully you can see, so these six pressure pads, or at least these six pads on the back, they're a good uh, 30 millimeters deep, that's, that's about an inch, maybe even deeper. But what it does is there's absolutely no pressure whatsoever on your spine. Instead, these six pads, the bottom two, put it just above, um, just above your, your arse muscles. What are they called? Your gluteus maximus. These then sit just kind of that mid back where your lats are. And then the two at the top just sit pretty much on your, on your traps, your trapezium muscles. So as your muscles are moving and you're, and you're walking and you know, whatever you're doing, it's diff it's, I've, ne I've, never, I've never tested a backpack that felt this different and different in a good way. It's almost, I, I, tried to, I, was, I was talking to my wife about it this morning. I said, the only analogy that I can think of is it's like somebody's put six tennis balls on the back of a backpack because you can feel it. You can feel those six points of connection on your back. Tennis balls is a, is a rubbish analogy because I think if you had six tennis balls pushing into your back, it probably wouldn't feel very nice. But you can feel this, a normal backpack when you've got it on. Do you know, should we put it on? Let's put it on. A normal backpack when you've got it on, 
probably need to squat down a little bit. But a normal backpack, when you've got it on, you just feel the whole sheet, that whole frame of the backpack against your back. Whereas when this is on, you can feel, and it's, I don't, it's, it, it's nice, it's really nice. So as I mentioned, you know, I've done a few walks with this. I did, uh, I did a 15, no, I did a 10K, I did a 15 kilograms, this is. Um, I did a 10 kilo, I did a 15 kilo, and I did a 20 kilo. The 20 kilo was probably the point for me where maybe my back, my age, maybe, maybe the experience of not carrying 20 kilos on a regular basis. That was the point for me that maybe I got to the point where I could start to feel it. But having done a few, because when I tested out the GR1 a few months back, I did another 20 kilo with that. And I know exactly the same walk that I did. So with walking this one, I walked easily twice the distance that I had done with the GR1 before my back started to started to feel it, started to compress. But it's still 20 kilos. It's 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 crazy, it really is nuts. So these six points on the back sit on those three muscle groups, your your traps, your lats, and your, your, your glutes. And what it does is it, it, it spreads the weight evenly across those and does an incredibly good job at it. On top of that, they've also put additional thought into the suspension system of the straps. So rather than just having um, a single piece, hopefully if you'll be able to see here, uh, there are some kind of, there's a wave to it. But what's also in here, which I've never come across again, is inside here, if I pinch this, you'll be able to see that there's actually a, a hard piece of plastic in there. So any backpack really carries the weight across these. So if there's additional weight on here when you've used the, the, the load adjusters, what this does is using the plastic frame sheet in here is again, it just spreads the weight out. Apart from the GR1, which has got amazing suspension system, again, this, this is, it just, it just works. And it works like no backpack that I've ever tested before, ever. But you can see the main reason, and the, 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 the reason that I'm smiling with this, one, it really is because, I don't know, you know when you, you come across something and you, you get kind of speechless, you don't really know how to, how to talk about it because I've never really had to try and think of the vocabulary before in the past of, of how this backpack carries and it carries completely different to anything that I've carried before but it's still just a backpack you know it, it fits on there is a sternum strap now I'm getting back into the review but there is a sternum strap which does a very good job of, of, of holding that in there's also a waist strap as well which is it, it's nice and large on the side so if you want to pull that tight you can make sure that that's tight and that will also take a little bit of weight off uh, the shoulder straps as well you know how, how it should be used and each side also has a small zip pocket in there as well so if you did want to carry something in each of these um, then you've got easy access to that sort of stuff I generally keep you know mints and um, my car keys in these when, 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 I'm, when I'm out and about the one thing that Kribgok were adamant that they wanted from me is the section where I look at a pack and I say, is there anything that I would change? I don't like to dwell on negatives. I certainly don't think that any bag has a negative aspect. It would just merely be something that I would amend to suit my use. Doesn't mean that it wouldn't suit somebody else's use, but they, they, were, they were implicit that they wanted me to be brutally honest. The only things that I can think are three, and it's three possibly very simple fixes. The first one's on the waist strap. So the waist strap, it connects here at the front, you have a massive buckle, I love this. Um, it really does a, a put a lot of pressure onto your waist so that you can take some pressure off here. 
What I find with some waist straps is, this and this being one of them, is it clips at the front and then the, the bits that you need to tighten this, you have to pull like that uh, to be able to tighten it. I know certain people like to be able to adjust it quite a lot as they're walking. What I've generally found is that that bit, because you then have these additional straps here just kind of dangling around, I found that if this buckle goes back to two more D-rings here so that you can pull it forward, it's actually an easier way for me to be able to, to fasten these. Um, that would be the first one, and I think that would be an incredibly easy fix because it would just mean lengthening this and adding an additional buckle here so that you could pull that. It also means that as far as management for additional webbing, it goes down the side so it's not in front of you, it's not in the way. The second one, again, would be a very easy fix for me, and that would be, so I do like the way that they've implemented these bottle carriers on the side. Um, what I would do is, rather than having this on the side, but still being able to access um, the features for the crampons, what I've seen with a lot of manufacturers, or at least a few manufacturers, what they've started to do is having um, another piece that comes across here, and rather than it being um, completely open, so it comes across here as more of a rigid sheet, so that it's, it's flush against the side of the pack. Then if you want, so they'll be able to have these crampon attachments here, because here down the outside, this is where the gusseting opens. Instead of rather than using maybe some elastic to, to hold that, to, to make sure that it snaps back, they could use maybe because this compression strap is here, they'd be able to reuse this connection to have an additional cinch strap on there that would be able to hold this fast against the side of the bag when it's not being used. Open it up down the side so that you can put water in there, but when it's not being used, then you can, you can have your crampons on the side as well. The last little bit, and again, this, this is a very simple and easy win for me, would be, so on the inside of here, we've, we've seen on, on, the, on that back panel, there is, there is an additional pocket that you can put a water bladder into. Um, although I don't think I'd want to compromise the structural integrity of the outside so that we could get in and use some, a, a pocket down the inside here, I think if they had just an additional pocket, so on the inside, built into the lining down here and down here so that you could put things, maybe you had certain items that you would always carry that would fit down each of the sides, then you could, you could have additional pockets maybe on the inside. But again, I'd definitely say as far as you know, things that I would change, I'm really being brutally honest and trying to rack my mind on things that I can go, well, I would definitely change this because as far as I'm concerned, I think this really is possibly one of the best backpacks I've, I've ever tested. I think the amount of thought that the Krig Gok team have dedicated putting into this going to the extremes of getting in touch with the Royal College of Physicians to say, how does your back work? Why has nobody ever asked the question to you guys, how does your back work? How should a suspension system, a back panel work on a backpack? You can see that these are guys that certainly are not happy with, yeah, it's good. They're not happy with that at all. They're also a team that definitely don't take no for an answer. You can't do that in a backpack. Well, hold my beer. Um, so I want to say a massive thank you to the team at Crib Gok. Um, I, there is another backpack. I've, I've not started to test it yet, mainly because I've put a lot of time into this one and there's, there's a couple of other backpacks that I'm testing as well. But I definitely want to say a massive thank you for sending this my way. Um, I hope my suggestions on, on how to change it uh, may be implemented in the future. I'd, I'd love to talk to you more about that. Um, but yeah, I, I genuinely do wish the team there a great future. So. 
if you look at the piece of content that I released a few uh, last week, um, we talked about in that how over the last few years they've predominantly been looking at selling or at least supplying these backpacks into different military, different special forces. Even through the US there are a few SWAT teams, well, I say a few, the, the list that they showed me, there's, there's a lot of SWAT teams that have started to use um, their gear. They're now starting to look at how they can promote these more to, you know, me, you, you guys out there selling these to people that are interested in getting in uh, getting hold of these. So at the moment, if you do want to get one of these, you need to get in touch with Kribgok. Um, I'll, obviously, I'll leave all of their details here so, that, so you can see they're selling them through there, but over the coming months, years, you will definitely be able to see these more in retailers around the world so that you can get your hands on these. Um, yeah, absolutely amazing pack. And it's been actually really nice to test this out, mainly just down to that. I, I can feel it now, I can feel the six tennis balls, but they're not tennis balls, tennis balls are bad, but I can feel those six points of contact on the back. It's, it's, just, it's just weird, but weird in a good way, because it, it's just different, absolutely different. If you get the opportunity to be able to try one of these on, if there are certain conventions, because I know uh, as far as military conventions around the world, they do like to attend those. Um, if you get the opportunity to visit the Kribgok team and try one of these out, highly recommend it. It's just, I can, you can feel it, it's weird. It's just weird, but weird in a good way, not weird in a bad way, weird in a good way, definitely weird in a good way. I'll leave all the Kribgok details in the description below. I will leave some of my uh, social media um, details. <laughs> I forgot what I was going to say then, but you can. I'll leave some of those in the description below as well. That would be awesome. I hope you all have a great weekend. For now, stay safe, stay more under, and stay EDC.